at what point, you know, if patients are like, let's just keep putting in tubes, like at some point do you say like, maybe we need to think about balloon dilation. I mean, a lot of times with the second or third tube, you think about the adenoidectomy, but is there a certain amount of tubes where you would say, okay, we've reached our limit. We can't put in tubes anymore. Or do you think about T-tubes at a certain point? Totally agree. So, so generally, first time around, kids are going to get a tube. If you've got a frequent swimmer, you know, who's on a swim team or something, they don't really want a tube. But most of the times you're going to get a tube up front first. And uh, tube worked. Everything was good. But it didn't do the job. As you said, it's just treating the symptom. It's not treating the, the source, the underlying etiology. So when you come time to explain, well, well, now we have to do something again, uh, you, you could place another tube or the balloon is an option. So for the exact same indications, I think they're, they're equally good options from that point of view, equally indicated, I should say. The, the balloon obviously is treating the source. Hopefully, and we've got a couple of studies that have been showing this, that if you do a balloon, your, your chances of needing further tubes actually is significantly reduced. So that's, uh, that's one thing to consider, is because you're treating the source, you're, you may be reducing the chance of needing further tubes. So if I see a child who's had multiple tubes, first of all, I've got to make sure they weren't patchless. Once we've ruled that out, then yes, then I, I will favor a balloon over multiple tubes. Right. Absolutely. And with multiple tubes, as you know, the tympanic membrane can eventually start to break down, and then you're dealing with a, a thin portion. It might turn into a pocket in the future, or they get perforations. The risk of a permanent perforation is going up each time you put in a, yet another tube. And I try to avoid the T-tubes. So a primary tube, you put in a primary short-term tube, that's about a 2% incidence of a permanent perforation. And that goes up each time you put in more tubes. A T-tube, a longer duration tubes, 16% uh, risk of a permanent hole. It's a big difference. Yeah. I think we've all had that patient where we put in a T-tube and then you see them in follow-up and the, the T-tube is just sitting in a perf and you're just like, oh, it's, it's really frustrating. So you could start thinking about a balloon dilation even with the second set of tubes? Well, sure. Our studies, we've all looked at patient, well, I've tried to look at patients who had two or more tubes. Most of them you know, had, had quite a number and previous adenoidectomy. So we were looking at worst case scenario types to see what the balloon would do in the research versus continuing to place more tubes. So in general, yeah, once they're looking at yet another tube, a balloon's a really great option. Mm -hmm. That's been the most common indication in my practice. I think the a majority of these indications are probably going to be, yes, they got a tube, tube work. Now we're facing yet another tube indication. The balloon might, might be a better option. Now that may change in the future, you know, as research goes on, maybe we can get away from tubes. That is actually a goal. Yeah, that's really interesting. So with that, we're talking about kids who are basically older than eight. So the indication's eight and above. Eight and above. 